Hello, here we are again. Um, I have a couple of sessions uh, of record um, because I have a couple of technical problems with the video and I basically, it didn't work so I didn't blow those two sessions. Uh, the first one is because, um, well, I was working on on changing the loader so it loads um, data blocks into banks um, and I started a little bit too late that day uh, so I was tired and I get I got lost a little bit um, so it was not very interesting um, um, at the end I finished that on the next session uh, during the weekend and and it was okay um, now you know I have to do a lot of changes and I the main problem with that is that I didn't remember how how the loader was was written um because yeah I made a lot of mistakes basically um so basically uh what I had to do is because previously in my previous code what I what I had is that I was loading the loader at the highest memory address I could so I had more space, you know, I was loading the, the loader at the highest memory address. Then after that, I was loading uh, the, the game code. So I had more space to uncompress at the lower address of the of, of memory, um, meaning that I, could, I had more space to overlap, basically. And it was working very well, uh, but I can't do that when I'm loading with banks because as well, let's take a look. So as we explained uh, last time, uh, basically uh, the specy 128k, what you do is you change the bank in the highest 16k of memory. So yeah, because I had the stack over here, I had the loader code over here. It wasn't working because when I was changing the bank. Obviously, the code that was being executed on the stack, you know, those were going away. So I was breaking stuff. So now what I do is I load, um, I load the, uh, yeah, I put the loader on the lower memory address that I can. Yeah, I have the, the, this table here. It doesn't look good because it's marked down and the table is so so bad. So basically, um, now I put in the loader at the beginning here, which is at the end of the screen. I just leave 512 bytes for the loader, which is more than enough. But for now, that's the mem that's the memory I'm reserving for that. And in that way, I can have the stack and the loader at the at the bottom of the memory and at the top I can load straight away a bank and the first data block that I have converted into banks is the map data which is the you know maybe it was a little bit too much for one session <laughs> anyway so basically now the loader is at the bottom and for now this is what I'm doing uh, I changed a few things. In the previous session, we had some free memory um, that we were using uh, for the text unpack code. So I have moved that now at the beginning. 512 is a lot, but for now, I'm not going to use that memory for anything else. So I'm going to work with that. I mean, I could relocate the loader to the top of the memory when I have finished with the banks and do... For now, I think this way, I think it's fine. Um, then basically, yes, I have decided to put the map data on bank one, which means that I have 16K for the map data, which is a huge amount of memory, which is... It's great. I mean, I don't use that that much memory, so I might make some changes because I mean, if I have 16k of RAM for the maps, it probably doesn't make any sense, um, or maybe it doesn't make 
that much sense to um, pack the map data in uh, four bits per tile. So you could have eight bits per tile and do some nice tricks with the tile sets. Um, so I might do that because at the moment, well, I have 16K. I mean, that's a lot of maps. That's a lot of game. So it's not a big deal. Um, then yeah this is uh, where i have the data call used for the render map um so at the moment all the stuff is in the bank too but i'm going to move it all to different banks as i go um because eventually it will run i mean it doesn't make sense i don't think i can have all the code in 16k of ram so well, there's a chance that I can manage to fit everything in two banks. So if I use bank two and bank zero, mm, that's probably okay. Um, that could be 32K for the code. Sounds, sounds good. And we still have all the banks for data. So it is possible I'm going to do that. Now, when I change the stuff, when I change the... Uh, when I changed the, the map, I had to put a map. Uh, sorry, I had to change the map importer to generate binary data. And it had to change a little bit how I do things because now, uh, from the point of view of my code, let's see, I have the map here. So, from the point of view of the code, I have this map is is a, the map table. It was going to give me the addresses of the different maps, and at the moment it's just going. It, I mean, it was a, an array of pointers. Now it's you know a pointer to a pointer. So, um, and this doesn't exist usually unless I map that bank in 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 that address. Then I have access to the map. So basically, I map, I do whatever I need to do with the map. Sorry, yes, I map, the, I put that bank on that address. I do what I need to do with the map, and then I put the default bank. So um, I had to make a few changes here because uh, when we did uh, the text entities, basically, the entity has a pointer to the text that we're going to show. And that pointer will go into the into a bank that is not mapped to that memory address. So I had, so I'm making a copy now. I might change that. I think because I can just swap, and I can swap and I'm and unpack that text into um, into this buffer here uh, when I need that. So. Shall we do that? Well, I had something different planned for today. But I think that's something I want to do anyway. Okay, let's do it. I mean, if it's short, I can still do what I want to do, right? So let's see. Uh, to do that, we need to go to the... So, so the terminal here has a pointer to the entities but I have changed this so the entities is now a copy of the entities so we can drop that and keep a pointer to the entities oh no I'm not sure if we can do that well no I don't think we can Basically, because yeah, I mean, what this, the map is doing at the moment is uh, I changed this. So uh, what is that? It is <laughs> this is duplicated. Oh, man. Um, right, so in here, 
um, in here we have yeah so I make basically I made a I have an array here that is basically the map is telling me what is the max length of all the entities on all the maps so I reserve that memory here and and then we uncompress into a, so basically we have a copy of everything we have a copy of the map data uncompressed for that map and then we copy basically the entities and then you know we map that bank then we go back to the default one so in that way when we process the entities we don't need to map things in and out i think i'm going to leave it like this uh, at the end of the day worst case is going to be that um so no because it's generated so i mean in this case is 187 bytes I have a limit to 255, so which is one byte. I think it's okay. We can do it later. Anyway, the other thing I did uh, on the second session that I kind of broke. <laughs> um, so, right. So I was. Um, so I was recording the session and then I started I showed tile <laughs> and then I changed something here and I didn't realize I ha I didn't remove that window so basically I spent like 15 minutes talking and writing code <laughs> without showing what I was doing anyway so what I did the other day is just I made a little bit nicer what we have with the with the with the terminals. Uh, I need to be careful so that doesn't happen again. Which means that the previous session, you know, we had I had nine sessions or ten sessions, and I was very lucky. I didn't break anything. Right. So so what I did here. Let me adjust the volume because I want to hear what's going on, but I don't want to cause trouble with it. Right. Oh. Let me go back. So basically, um, when you don't have the credentials, we had this already. Uh, make that noise. And now, what I did is that if you had the credentials before showing the actual test of the text of the terminal, I show this once. And then I wrote a function to show the text like it was a typewriter, right? And it only shows that once. So if you go here, you don't see the, so you get the text. So you don't, the access granted is only shown once. I might, I may, might show that all the time, but you know, once you know that you have access, it's probably okay to leave it like that. Just to not show it again. Right. So that's the other thing I did. Now, what I want to do today is I want to make some changes in here because at the moment this menu screen uh, is nice but um, there's not a space to add more things and I might need to add more things I think I'm going to add more things I mean I usually uh, I keep the menus very simple uh, because you know I don't have a lot of memory and especially if it's a 48k game in this case um, you know, because I don't have a space, let's keep it simple. I put the main credits, but for example, I usually don't mention the people that help me to the uh, to do the testing. That information goes to the website and in the manual of the physical edition, if there is any physical edition. Um, but in this case, we had 128, so I thought I would make this slightly better. There is also another thing, um, there is an limitation when you're working with 48k because you're using the internal beeper and the internal beeper is, so the beeper is basically CPU bound um, 
when you're playing a, a song or music, you can't do anything else. So you're basically using 100% of the set ID um, CPU. I mean, you can do some tricks and you can put up on an interrupt and not use and leave some, some, some you can leave some CPU to do other things or make the music very, very simple. Like you can hear, for example, in, in Manic Miner, I think it is, or Yes, I will. Um, but for example, if we, let's take a look to one of my games. For example, let's take a look to Colony 8. That could be, let's say, So this is uh, it's one bit music. So this is just it's commuting on and off at different frequencies uh, the the beeper and it's simulating four channels, I think. So there's nothing you can do. I mean, it's going to use all the CPU. Uh, if you try to do anything else, so that's why you play the music and then. You press any key to do anything whatsoever. You have to stop the music. Um, but now, because this is going to be a 128k game, um, we are going to have the IY chip. So we're going to have background music with an interrupt, and that means that we can do other things. Um, and because we can do other things, I thought that we're going to make a nice effect for the menu. And let's take a look how we draw the menu. So in the menu, we have these two things here. Okay, so we're going to have need uh, at least, mm, 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 we're going to need at least two, Something else, something more to show. For example, so that is screen. Screen. And we're going to call it whatever. Well, someone might help me with the load on the screen, but for now it's not official, so let's keep it like that. And credits, for example, we can do... Mm. Oh, what? Man, what do I do? Sorry. Here. No. So, for example, we can do testing, maybe. <laughs> well, the problem with doing some fancy tricks with the with the credits is that you need a lot of things to to show, otherwise. Is going to be really crap, but anyway, let's let's do with just a lot of the screen the credits, which is probably enough, right? So now we probably so we're probably not going to do it like this. I think what we're going to do is. So we're going to have here credits and it's going to be, we're going to put two defines. We're going to get, uh, so the title and then 
Ah, because the script that packs the text is going to convert this to, into a define. So, uh, so credits will be credits uppercase, credits author will be credits author uppercase, and loading screen and credits loading. We are going to that and. Right, so we can do that. I think looks okay. And um, in here, we probably don't want to draw the menu all the time. We can call, we can call a function call day menu maybe uh, I kind of like so draw menu is not bad but I kind of prefer this way of doing that now so let's change that so menu oh. And menu update. Um, hmm. We may come back to this. I'm not completely sure how I'm going to do it. I know more or less what I want to do, but I'm not sure how to do it. Right. So, so we're going to draw. Do we do this in other places? No. Right. So, right. So, we do the menu. That's fine. And. and we need to change this <laughs> so basically if you're not pressing any key it just waits and when I know there is something in the buffer then I scan what is that you pressed but we shouldn't be doing it like that now because we need to actively do something every loop so if there is something to read All right, so if there is something to read, then do this. I think. Let's have my screen. Okay, so. And otherwise, wait, right? And we're going to update the menu. That would do stuff. Now, there's, there are two ways of doing this. Uh, well, there are more ways of doing this. But I think it's probably better if, if the color to the menu controls uh, how the update changes instead of having maybe a global variable somewhere else. So we can do, for example, uh, new step maybe start with zero and then menu step and then so basically the fact that I want to do I want to implement is I want to show I want to fade in the text so fade in uh, one line another line show it for some seconds, fade out, and then fade in the next two lines of crates, and then fade out and loop again. That's the idea. So basically, menu step, 
Right, so... <sighs> yeah, the problem is because I, I'm making the text large so everyone can read it. I don't have a lot of screen now. And I really like having things on the screen. Right, so... So we can have the credits length here, for example, and then so uh, we can do a menu step is bigger than. So we know the fading is going to be seven frames, for example. And fade out another seven because we're going to go from zero to all the colors and the specky you can do them in the same order as they are they look great like that uh, for now we may change uh, things and make different lines different color but for now we can go with that so it will be seven so it will be then sometime and then fade out Maybe? No, we're going to do differently. So, I think we're going to do it differently. I'm going to control everything in the, in the, men, in the menu. Because... Yeah, because I need to do having just this here is not going to be enough. Um, let's, let's make it simple first, right? And actually, can we use anything? Can we use the tick that we update in the interrupt to control the animation? Right, okay. So. So we're going to use some global variables because this is an 8-bit machine and who cares? Who cares? So, so menu step and we're going to reset here things. So after we draw, we update and um, right. So I don't want to initialize here because every time we change something, I want to start the menu from the beginning and when you end the game and you go to menu start again. So, and if I put both cases, this is going to use memory because the C runtime needs to set the value we put to initiate the variable. So basically don't initiate variables if you can avoid that because it's going to cost you memory, basically, just do it, doing that. Right, and it's also going to initiate once, whilst in this case, you can always set the menu to zero every time you draw the menu, which is better in this case. Right, so menu update, so menu step, and then we're going to get this two, and we're going to put them here. And then we need uh, so menu crates is going to start in zero. Oh, so we start with this first pair, right? Uh, okay, so we're going to start with zero. So instead of doing this, we're doing credits or even better. This, right? And 
So one oh. So it's one plus. Do, 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 do. Right. So the credits don't have padding, which is it's going to be a problem, but we can just take that into account. So we're going to do that if menu menu step equals one. If it's zero, right? And here we increase that and then if many step is larger than for example sixteen then you go back to zero and menu so well in this case we only have two right it's going to be menu credits this so it's going to be zero one zero one right actually we can even do we can do it better <laughs> because we can do this zero two zero two and uh that should be do something this should do something already like don't compile nice oh because that's not how it's called is text pack excellent right here right Ooh, oh. It didn't work, as you can see. Nothing's happening. Uh, so menu draw. The it's full. Then we scan. This looks clear. Menu update. Many date. If there is no step, so many step is zero. Then you put the text. Oh man! Right. So this is drawing in the. This is drawing in the buffer screen. So we need to update the screen. Otherwise, it won't. Right. Well, it's doing something, right? So the first thing we can see is is that sixteen is not enough. So we can use, for example, forty-eight. Hmm. Yeah, a little better. No, there is something else here that is not right because the y coordinate is correct, but then this one is going to be different. So let's make this a little bit better. So, um, in texts, we can calculate what is the size of that. So it's length of loading screen. So it's going to be 16, which is the center of the screen, minus that, which is 9. Right, so it's going to be 9 for one of them. And we can make it slightly better, like nine and and uh, we use placeholder. Uh, 
which is not good. So we're going to use placeholder like this. Placeholder. And that is going to be 10. Right, so now this is going to be crates menu crates and this is going to be no yeah so the y didn't change now this is going to be plus one and then plus two could have copied the other one and plus three and now we're going to it's going to be four Ooh. so let's see boom, boom, boom. yeah it's center but it's just not not removing the the other one right so yeah we probably want to we probably want to erase those two lines of text mm, right well we know we have a buffer somewhere we have a lot of buffers we have buffers everywhere but basically we can do and set and then do I have available the address of that buffer? I don't think I do. There is a unpack buffer. Hmm. Okay, it's here, but Yeah, we can have it somewhere here, for example. Maybe. I don't have really a... Uh... Yeah, we can use that. Unpack buffer. So... I never remember what is the order. So, destination, what I want to set, and the size. Right. So, destination is unpack. unpack. Unpack buffer, right? And it's going to be space character, and it's going to be. It's going. It's not going to be thirty two, but we can use thirty two, right? And then, yeah, but we need a zero at the end. <laughs> ah, can we do this in a different way? Can we just go straight away to our buffer? Maybe? Yeah, I was planning to... Okay, so I can set 32 lines, 32, like this. So... I don't know, P? <laughs> I mean, you think you think too much. You've been doing nothing really. So instead, we are not thinking. We're just doing things. So ink black maybe. And paper is paper is black, something like this. Oh, mm. right. So that should should not work. Too many parameters. Hmm? It's complaining about sixty-seven. Name set. Oh. Did I include the string here? No, I didn't. Uh, 
Now, using things like memset, for example, in SDCC. No, it's not complaining about that. It's because I'm doing something wrong here. What? 70? Oh, no. It's because I'm using the wrong one. Uh, put text, not back. Because it's not packed. Right. Um, right, it works. It's not exactly what I want, but it's getting there. And it's pretty pretty anyway. So okay, so so we said forty eight. Well we're going to a uh, fourteen, I think. So this is going to be 48 plus 58. I don't know, just something like that. Because so we're going to put ink black and ink black here. So what we're going to make them black. And here many step is larger than now it's just many step is less than seven. Then we're going to increase we're going to change the attributes on the screen of this two lines so they fade in okay yeah we can do that um and i think p is going to be useful i mean i can do this in assembler but we're going to do it in c because why not and then you know if it's using too much memory or it's too slow or we don't like it we can change that to use something else so so the attributes the attribute table is uh, 786 characters starting in CC uh, 58, right? On the specy. And this is line 38, 32. Okay, plus. Because it's made of crates. <laughs> right, so that's the first character of. Mm, this is not nice. Right, we, can do, we have to do it differently. We can't really. We need to go through all the 32. Okay, so. So basically, what I want to do is, we are going to use the uh, the the bright attribute, I think, for example, as a marker. Or we can actually see. Ooh, ooh. So so ink is black, and. So ink is black and paper we can use white. <laughs> okay. 
So I want to use that as a marker. Um, in here we have the attributes. So po, 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 po. so paper black no, paper white. Paper white is thirty eight. So if the character uh, thirty eight equals to no oh, it's thirty eight. We can use it just like this. Then we don't care about that one. Otherwise, we just increase one for now. And we do the same one for the, for the next one. And in this case, we know it's going to be 32 more. <laughs> so we can do this. No, that's not right. Because if we continue, we not, don't process the other one. So it's not true. Which is something different than zero. Let's see. We may even crash. Hmm, nice. Look at that. What? Oh, right. So this is something here. Let's go like this. Oh, yeah. Compiler warning because I have. I want the compiler to report errors or warnings, so I don't have. Uh, right. See. So it's not really. Oh, it's not really what I wanted to do. So it's because something I don't remember about how I print things. All right, that was the problem. Yes, because my type setting starts in zero. In the first one is a space. But <laughs> in my PC, space is not zero. It's the character number 32, right? So, so I need to change that, then it's a star 32. And now we need the blue variable back. Come on. Right. <laughs> well, it's still not working, but kind of. That's more or less what I wanted as effect, but. So in black, paper white, then if paper is not white, if paper is not white, so if this is not equal to, if, if this is not equal to that, then whatever. Well, actually, we can do this, which is more readable. And uh, repeat this here and here. So, right. So, let's think about this. Uh, All oh, right, but I need to increase e, right? Well, close enough. Oh, <laughs> uh, what I'm doing? It looks nice, but that's not exactly what I wanted. I'm actually breaking stuff. So new. Is this address correct? I did the right thing with the attributes. 
how can I tell if I'm doing the right thing with the attributes? Do I have something I can look at the code? New does not end um, because it's, we're looking for stuff that is written directly into the screen. So, so this screen top. Boom! That's a lot of stuff. I don't remember. Mm. Yeah, it's 58. That's correct. This is correct. So and then what what I'm doing wrong? Number of lines. 32 characters per line. Could it be that I don't trust the compiler? So move 32 characters. If a character has actually We don't need that. We can do we can do this. But this is not exactly the attributes that we set when we erase the text. Then uh, then just do the effect and see what happens. So the other code was okay. It's doing the same thing. So that's not the problem. Uh, well, all oh, right. Oh man. No, it's correct. It's minus. It's less than seven. So we only do this seven times, right? And when it's larger than seven, we don't keep the. That's why we see the effect. So this loop looks okay. That's it too, right? So oh no, this is not this is not correct. This is not correct. So we need to increment the value of the pointer. Right, so uh, so it's actually doing it currently the first time, so that's what we wanted. And actually, uh, yeah, the difference is that doesn't that one doesn't have the right. So the first one works, but then. When we erase here, it's not doing the right thing. What is put text doing? No, it's the attribute. That's correct. Could we do this wrong? No, because I have used that in other places. So, could it be that we're changing the attributes here? And when we draw this, when we put this stuff through the buffer, it's fitting through that, that? No, because it really doesn't matter, I think. I mean, if we comment this, we're not going to say anything. So, so, okay. 
so this is not erasing the stuff why is the put text doing actually so I was assuming that that was correct so it's putting the title with attribute and then well that looks okay to me why why is not putting the attribute in the right it's not erasing anything no it's not so it could be that Ah, oh, I see what it is. So maybe the space is encoded as all paper. No, damn it. <laughs> Why not? looks correct to me you see I think the problem is going to be with the text that is not working the way I think it's working and tile attribute tile attribute is basically it's just packing the tile and the attribute in the way I need that and text text is just a tile so actually when I'm doing this I mean it's just setting to zero is that correct oh I see what's going on yes is that what is going on yeah we have the text tile set so space is not zero it has to be one. Oh, right. So I was passing basically the empty string. Yeah, that was the problem. And why there is an ampersand over there? I don't know. Yeah, we are going up by one. This seems to be okay now. What am I doing now? Right. Yeah, it works now. But the thing is that we have changed this. And actually, we didn't have to do it. I think it's because I was putting the wrong, the wrong stuff here. So it should be like this. Well, the main problem with this is that I wrote this around Christmas. And I don't remember how it works anymore. Right, so it was correct. It has to be the other way around. Nice. So let's undo this. So white, black, and then this has to be this. Silly. Yeah, I mean, I still don't know <laughs> why why is messing with it's because of the bright attribute. So what is the bright attribute? What is the bright attribute doing? Are we increasing only the ink? Right, 
from 0 to 7. Is that correct? Uh -huh. Oh, that's eight then. Yeah, but it doesn't explain why it's doing that. So in white, paper black, in white, paper black. That is exactly the same. Now it's in white and bright here. Could it be that is a problem with the bright attribute? Oh, I see what's the problem. Is, this is zero, right? Let me see. We need to get this working. So, so this is not going to be zero. It has to be very simple. Hmm. Yeah, this is still doing some funny business, <laughs> and I don't know why. Oh, could it be because this is not right? This is, it should be increasing the other one. Okay, so the highest, right. Huh? No, that's completely, that's completely wrong. I still don't know why I don't know why is I mean we're just increasing the ink that's the only thing we're changing isn't it so is that true so this is ink white just seven Oh no, we need to change that to black. Oh. Uh, I'm just forgetting why I'm doing this. But. So it has to be in black and paper black, so we don't see it. Switch is zero. Right. And that's why here we were not using zero. We were using. Uh, Uh, we're using uh, paper white, for example. Yeah, because that's how we detect that those are the ones that, you know. So paper white, because it's zero, you know, all the bytes are ink. I think it's ink. If it's not ink, we'll see that it won't work. But. Paper white. Now we know it's not paper white. <laughs> we know we can use that as a marker. Well, damn it, I'm just doing stupid, stupid. We can use the attributes as a marker. Then I thought we could. Because if we use if we use the ink. Can we use the ink? 
I mean, white is definitely the last value we're going to have. Right? So, no. <laughs> so, ink white. And then here we said, right? And it's pepper and ink should be zero. So we put the stuff, but the attributes, you know, it's basically not showing anything. And then if it's something we need to touch, does it really matter? Can we increase anything really? Anything that is less than white. Mm -hmm. No, it's not doing. I'm probably making a mis probably making a mistake now. And I can't see it, so but we said in white. So the attributes of those are going to be seven. So the attribute is seven. Oh. If it's not seven, then we increase the color. Way. Stupid mistake, isn't it? Well, that works. Now, I want the bottom one to be yellow. So instead of white, We're going to use yellow, yellow for that one, which is the same thing I had before, but we have the fading now, and it changes. So what happens if we redefine? It's fine. Go back to the same place. We go to the game. We go back. We go to the same place. Now, this is looking more like what I wanted. Bit messy here, but. Now, let's do the fade out. The cheese step is larger than. Oh, seven. And we're going to do the same thing until ink is not black. And we are going to subtract. And I think with this we have finished for today. Well, I mean, it looks okay. Maybe in my head it was going to be more amazing than this, but I can potentially clean up this a little bit. But I think this is what I wanted. I mean, when there's some music playing, for example, in the background, it's going to be different. If there is some movement and I can add more crates and instead of, of talking between two values, I can go through the array, you know, and just show them all. Right, I think I'm going to leave it here. Uh, let's take a look how
take a look how awful the generated code is. So let's go here. See, SDCC will show us. See, that meant that, for example, it's just a. Uh, oh! This is quite awful. I think this could be better. Anyway. Um, so, all the stuff, which is quite a lot. Well, it's not that bad. Look at this. It's quite good. It's not too bad. Anyway, if we can afford the memory, I mean, it's probably more maintainable and readable that writing in an assembler. So, um, let's copy this. And it's basically all this stuff. So, okay, so this is the text we added. It is, we made, you know, it's just because it's a constant that it's handy to have it available. Be careful, I mean, I need to remember that I can't use this if I have something unpacked already in there. Then change the name of that, then we made this instead of being blocked until there is a key press. This way, it keeps going in loop so we can do the update with the delay. We currently have 16 frames per second. And here is the function that does the fade in, fade out instead of putting the fades. Right, looks okay. And I think we're going to be here for today. It's been a long day. So this has been a little bit messy. <laughs> well, but at least I didn't screw the video, like leaving a, a different window in front of the code or anything silly like that, like it happened last time. So it's pretty good. Okay, so that's all for today. Um, for the next session, I'm not completely sure what I'm going to do. Um, I think I would like to continue working on the text terminals because they are going to be an important element of the game. And although they currently do stuff, but there's much that I want to include in there. Um, that's one option. The other option is probably um, go and move stuff to the to different bank probably um, I was thinking to do that with uh, either the tile sets uh, split them a little bit um, so I can have the tile data in a different bank or maybe move the code of the entities uh, to a different bank because we're going to have more enemies and it's not going to fit in 16k anyway so we probably want to use 32, but we need to be careful how we uh, put things. So we never using code in a bank that we need to use for something else. Um, and that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, session a little bit messy, but I managed to do what I wanted. Uh, and the code is not terrible, which is always uh, a win. Um, remember, you like these videos, so you can subscribe or like or leave a comment suggestions whatever you want will be welcome so see you next time